Yeah, it's gonna be recorded. Okay, we are. I'm gonna. <laughs> it's making I'm gonna me silence good. my phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, actually, here we are. Are we? Are we delete. there? Are we there? Are we live? Are we live? Yes, we are. Oops, we are live. There we are. Got it. Okay. Hi, everyone. We are late. And for the first time, it's not uh, the woman's fault. <laughs> no, definitely. It, you know, uh, Larry was coming home from from church. And so he popped on in and this is perfect. This is the right time. And I am so thankful that Larry is here. Larry, um, hi everyone, I'm Gio and this is Larry. <laughs> and Larry and I go way back and I'm not gonna get into all of that. Just know that we are good friends and um, you know, I know his family, he knows my family. And so we, um, I've wanted for a long time to, to share a little bit about um, what what I believe will be helpful to the body of Christ. I don't think there's a lot of conversations that are open and honest about certain things regarding being single as a Christian, as an adult, um, for some previously married or in previous relationships, because now, you know, with people, the hookup culture, you know, people live together and then they, they, um, they either break up or they come to to know the Lord after that breakup, after living with someone. And actually that, you know, that can be considered like a marriage relationship. So it, there's a lot and, and you carry a lot of emotional things. And and um, and there's certainly uh, it's different. It's different uh, uh, as as you are not only healing, but then um, you go through that healing process and then you go into uh, wanting to please the Lord in your life, in the future, in whatever it is moving forward. And so things come up and, and uh, life, life is going and we want to make sure that we are striving for, for holiness and all of that. So anyway, uh, you know, this is kind of, un, it's unscripted. And so we're just going to have this candid talk, Larry and I, and I've got you know, some things that I, I want to make sure we hit upon, but, um, but we'll just see where this goes. Cool. So today, today we want to focus on holiness. Okay. That cool. that's a, that's a, I made hot chocolate, Larry, while you were driving from church, I went and just got, I got some heavy cream and half of this is heavy cream. I'm going to sleep really good tonight. And then the rest is water and it's, it's really hot. It's, it's good hot chocolate because it's really cold in here. Okay. So I've got that. Um, I'm all settled here. We're going to have just a, a good conversation and it's going to be on holiness. Okay. Okay, Larry. So why is it important that we be holy? Why would we want to be holy? First of all, I want to ask, is that what kind of hot chocolate is that? That better be Abuelita's chocolate. Oh, uh, no. Americanized hot chocolate. Uh-huh. So I sell that at the market every Saturday. You need to come okay. over. And for a good five bucks, I sell it for four bucks. But for you, it'll be five bucks. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> five <laughs> bucks. I'll get you a nice cup of Abuelita Mexican okay. hot chocolate. Web City Got Market. It. I'm just sh a, a shameless throw there. A little plug. Hey, I was trying so to help you out there. Swiss. Just the Swiss. Um, uh, gotcha. Yeah. So okay. Back to your question. So. I guess there's the there's the two questions or the two answers are uh, there's the <laughs> the Christianese answer. Well, in the Bible says, "Be holy, for I am holy." Right. So that okay, because I'm holy. Be holy, because I'm holy. Okay. Uh, so God calls us to be that way. Um, that's the Christian answer to that. Uh, but on the other end of it is what I think is. God call, calls you to be holy because, how do I say this? He knows what's good for you. And so he knows that, uh, now remember, holy means being set apart, you know, and, and all that, okay? Um, and he knows that that to be part of that, to be a part of your life on that, that way, it's ultimately going to benefit you. 
Um, because it draws you closer to him. It gets you closer to him. It gets you um, having a relationship deeper than you've ever had. And um, it's hard for people who are not, don't have a relationship with the Lord to understand that because they just see like, what, what are you talking about? You know, that's, that's weird. Okay. You're, you're weird. Okay. You're not fun. And when they hear of the word holy, they're like, oh, so you don't do anything. Okay. It's like, no, it's not, that's not what we're talking about. It's just, it's setting us up, ourselves apart so we can be closer to God. And the closer we get to God, I don't want to say the better life is because it's not, it's not like that. It's just the anointing is there and it just, uh, it changes who you are from the inside out. There's a protection. There's a protection, I think, is what you were getting at, too. Correct. Um, in that, um, yeah, and you hit on Leviticus 20, 26. I had written down these scriptures. I'm not just popping that out of my head, okay? So I had done my <laughs> theologian <research>. geo. <laughs> Leviticus 20, 26. And I love um, the book of Leviticus. And Jesus often quotes it. And, and it's the most quoted book in the, the New Testament. Um but yeah, it, it, it's be holy for I am holy. Like that alone, and we are speaking to the body of Christ here. So um, why should you want to be holy? Because God says so. <laughs> because God says, be holy for I am holy. And then Peter, in 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16, he says, be holy, um, He's calling them to holiness. He's saying, you know, you guys got to be set apart, be holy um, in all your conduct, all of it, um, because it is written. And then he quotes Leviticus, be holy for I am holy. So this is where we're coming from. This is the context where we're coming from our conversation. This is going to be the foundation of that. You know, we're going to strive to, um, in everything that we do, be holy. Does that mean that we are perfect? Does that mean that we're going to get it right every time? <laughs> oh, uh, I can tell you from my own experience, that's not happening. Yeah. Um, uh, you strive for it, um, but that's when the grace of God comes in, um, where he, he, where you lack, he's the one that brings it in there for you. Because, uh, no, you're, you're right. We don't get it perfect. And I'm far from perfect. And I don't claim to be perfect. Um, and uh, it's, mm -hmm. I want to be, I want, I, I desire to, to, to strive to be holy, but I need a lot of help. And that a lot comes out from the Holy Spirit who uh, guides me in a lot of that as best as, 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 as uh, I can do to follow that. So, um, I think people usually get afraid when they hear people talk about being holy and all that or trying to be holy because I you they feel like you're trying to be condescending to them like oh I'm trying to be holy and you need to be holy too and it's like no this is God calls us to be that we fail and that's when the blood of Jesus <laughs> comes and yeah. helps us out because um that's the only way we can try to even get close to that does that make sense what I'm saying yeah in Christ we are made perfect in Christ. Right. We are, you know, we, we are holy because he is holy. The blood of Jesus makes us holy. But the thing is that in our humanness, we sway so many times or we sometimes step out of that or we, we, we are not clinging. There are times that we don't cling to the Lord and, or we're not, we're not walking in what he has for us. We're not walking in obedience and trust. And so we stray away from that. And that's where the dangers lies and these pitfalls are there and and um that's why he he t commands us to be holy because it's not automatic it's something that we have to strive for they have to work at every day and and it is through grace and mercy because it's not from works we're not you know we're not doing it in our own strength but we are we are asking holy spirit to help us he has given us all the tools he has given us grace and mercy certainly but it is a journey it is a journey. So there are things that we have to do every day to keep us in check. What are, what are some of the things, Larry, that you do on a daily basis or on a regular basis that keep you in check, 
that you say, okay, if I, you know, I'm going to really try to do these things because I know these things are good for me. I know that this is going to build me up spiritually. I know this is going to make me a good, you know, example gotcha. to others, to my daughters and so forth. What are, what are some of those things? Well, and I don't know if you touched on this, but let's, let me dive out real quick about my, um, about me personally. I am a single man, uh, was married for 10 years and four years ago, five about to be five, um, went through a divorce. So I'm a single man and, and have been, I have two girls. One is 13 and one is seven. And so, uh, when you mentioned my girls, I was like, yeah, she's, my oldest is 13. She's starting to get to that age where we're going to have to have those conversations, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's going to be interesting. But, um, and again, I'm not perfect. I fail at these every day. Um, but I try to have a plan, um, to follow these as best as I can. But like I said, I'm not perfect. So they do fail, but, um, daily, I don't know this sounds very Christianese, but a daily time with, with the Lord, like uh, reading your Bible and praying is something that mm -hmm. you got to try to do as much as you can. Um, there is times where I fail at that because uh, I'm a teacher. And so in the mornings, if I have to do morning duty, um, I have to be there super early. So I don't get, I don't do it in the morning. Okay. And then, uh, I, I'm a, I play drums for our church. So if we have a big event, I, um, end up not being able to do it at night because we're rehearsing or something like that. And it's been, it's a long night. And so I fail. So don't, I hate it's you gotta you gotta forgive yourself but you also gotta be able to say hey okay i, I did I, I wasn't able to do today let's do it tomorrow <laughs> and mm -hmm. kind of held yourself accountable to that you know and um so but it's a, i can tell there's a there's a difference between uh the days that if i go a few days without reading the word um praying you know small increments it doesn't have to be long ones i usually take 15 20 minutes depending on what time i got um, but I can tell the difference in my days if I don't do those. Um, I do that. I try to um, uh, go to church. Okay. Um, you know, church, going to church isn't going to get you saved, but going to church does help you. Accountability. Um, accountable. Accountability. Yeah, you're accountable. Um, especially like um, when my when I don't go to church, my buds are like, Hey, where you at? And I'm like, Oh, dude, I, I had a game or something. I had to work out or something like that. But I'm always thankful that they're asking me. They're not asking me because they're like, you should be here, but they generally want to know, Hey, where you at? And I'm like, Hey, I had a day that I wasn't able, I wasn't able to be there tonight. Sorry. But that gives me accountable. Um, so good, uh, having a good church, uh, to go to, uh, having, people and it kept going back to accountability having um guys that i trust um uh, that are my close friends whom i can go to uh whether there's a good situation or a bad situation that happened in life i can go to them i can text them message them call them visit them uh and vice versa you know there's a group of guys that i i call dear friends that i i, I keep close to me that have known what i've gone through i've known what I'm going through and uh, um, they're there to help me if something's wrong they're there to help me or, or to cheer with me if something went great uh, and I think that's really important to have something when you're alone usually that's when the enemy attacks you know and, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be in through your mind or through something that's going on divide uh, and conquer when you're alone you know Yep. Yeah, you're alone. You're like, I'm coming after you. So it's always good to have people around you that you can trust. And then my family is there as well. There, uh, my sister is somebody who is constantly there in my ear, helping me out always since I was a wee little baby, you know, and um, oh, that all that together <laughs> helps, has helped. Yeah. Okay. What so, about you? What do you do? So people, ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> um wow okay so you talked about prayer the word and people and that is that is god and people <laughs> and that is what god commands us to do love god and love people and 
I, I really think that, you know, you hit it um, right on the dot when you said it is those times when I don't have those moments with God that, uh, and you feel it and you feel it when I haven't stepped into his presence, when I haven't been in his presence, man, do you feel the difference? It is, it is this need, like I, you have to get to the point and, and here, here's the beauty of it. It's like a, a blessing and it's also hard you know, because there's a level of loneliness um, when you're not married, right, that, that you go through, but you can use that towards just being desperate for the Lord and that intimacy with him and that just desire to be with, with him and, and to have this, this deep, um, you know, it's, it's this deep love, this deep, um, um, this deep, part of you that he fills up, that he restores, that he, that only he knows what you're going through. And so it, to have that moment. And the thing is that, I mean, for me, it's the minute, like I wake up, oh God, I need you. Like, I'm going to screw up today. If you know, you're not with me, God, I need you. And I need you to remind me that I need you, God, you know, in everything and, and Holy Spirit, is a constant guide and and he's the one that constantly he's he's the guide the coach always pushing us and pulling us towards the cross and towards Jesus it's in the shower it's while I'm driving it's it's understanding the importance of of the atmosphere of worship worship music is so important I love all kinds of music but there's something about you know when you start playing worship music when when the when it's vertical, when it's, you know, going towards the Lord and, and then, and then it just fills your spirit with this, you know, this desire, like a magnet to be in his presence. Um, so being in the presence of God, having that intimacy with him. And then definitely I get by with a little help from my friends. I cannot make it if, you know, if I'm away from the body of Christ, um, on a daily basis, I got to check in with a friend. I've got to have some sort of encouragement, words of life. And likewise, we have to do that for other people too. Yeah, be available so, to them. You know, yeah. um, learning to be a friend. Um, okay, so similar things. Well, definitely the, the thing is the presence of God, staying in prayer, staying in communion with God. And, um, and like you, you hit upon, you know, Christianese and, and, and uh, you, you don't want to be churchy. You don't want to be like in your, in your conversation, even there's, you know, but at some point um, th there's gotta be, you're right. I, I don't like that. I don't like being religious. I don't like, but at, at some point, and I've had friends tell me this, and I don't know how you are as far as when you talk to your friends or, or colleagues or what have you, but there are friends that have told me like, Gio, you just talk about God. Like, it's just so natural for you to talk about God. Like, and I'm going, what? Like, I don't understand that. Has that ever happened Naturally. to you? Uh, the, my students do. Yeah. Like, um, I think they're not used to having a teacher who uh, plays worship music in their, in their classroom or talks about what we learned at church and, you know, we're quick and right before the bell rings or something like that. And they had told me, Mr. Brooks, you talk about a God a lot. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's who I am. I mean, it's who he's, he's everything to me. So, uh, and most of them go, um, oh, we like that. We like that. We like that you're, you're open about that. So I think that they sense that they've sensed the Holy Spirit. That, uh, it's something different that they're not used to. So I have had my students mention that before. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the people I spend time with uh, are uh, churchgoers, Christian people. So yeah. uh, they don't mention it as much because they're just used to that stuff. So, but my <laughs> students, they're just a little different. They, they do sense that this or difference when they enter my classroom, which I guess is a good thing. That's a good thing. You're creating like an atmosphere, an atmosphere that is the presence of God. Like they sense it. They just come right into that. That's great. That's awesome. Um, so day-to-day -day stuff, anything else, day-to-day -day stuff or on a weekly basis or, you know, what do you do to keep your, your spirit in check 
to, to realize, hey, I don't want to get cold. I don't want to get stale. I don't want to get comfortable. Uh, it's, I, I don't know. I really, I, a lot of it, it has to do with, um, like I said, con- always making sure I'm spending the time with the Lord. And I think uh, my, my relationships and my ch- church is really has kept me, mm. uh, not the word accountable, but just, just there, you know, always looking, striving. Um, the worship team that I participate in, you know, we're, we're always texting each other and asking each other how we're doing. And um, we're having meetings and most of the meetings end up being prayer meetings because we're praying for each other. Yeah. And so um, that's kind of just those relationships are really important. Your life, yeah. your day to day is focused on him. Okay. You got to. Even at work, even at work, I hear you say like, you know, you've got the music going, you're, you're constantly, yeah. you're being a witness, whether you're, whether you're preaching or not, you're being like a witness to those around you. You get in you. trouble one of these days and you're like, oh, yeah. no. like, sorry guys, a little too much, my bad. <laughs> Let me lay hands on you. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> um, okay. So that's step now. Now I want to talk about, here's something really obvious, you know, that, that a lot of people don't or gloss over, don't really talk about, but where I want to talk about temptation regarding um, the challenges about keeping pure, sexually pure. Okay. Oh, so, yeah, you're going straight through that. Okay. I see. Yes. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's go for the jugular, man. We don't have a lot of time here. So I know that you, you just said you've been uh, divorced for five years. That's a long time. And then, mm-hmm. you know, uh, as well, it, just this journey of um, celibacy, this, this journey of holiness. Um, talk to me about that because the word of God says so much about staying sexually pure or not being lustful, the spirit of lust, because Jesus brings it to another level. I mean, we know, you know, that, that the old Testament talks about all, all kinds of, uh, of sexual sin. And then Paul hits upon it, but Jesus says this in Matthew five twenty eight. but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully, in, uh, with a lustful intent has already committed adultery um, in his or her heart, right? In his heart. So so Jesus takes it to another level because it's about the heart. It's about the heart. And so that's, uh, that's where sin, the thought, it's a thought um, where sin originates, you know? And then it, become, it can become action. Okay, so tell me, about how you um, how you deal with that, with the temptation, with sexual purity, and all of that. Well, <laughs> yeah, seriously, thanks. So I, I have a phone call coming in. I gotta go now. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, a phone so, call at nine forty five. That's temptation. <laughs> it, no, it's my friend. It's my friend. Um, well, first, <laughs> let me just say, you know, when I was growing up, I remember thinking. I can't wait to get older because then I don't have to worry or deal with this stuff anymore, you know, because all the stuff that I, temptation, being youthful, you know, youth and growing up and I can't keep myself pure. Uh, Fast forward to now and I'm like, no, it's pretty much the same. Um, (laughs) You still deal with it in the same capacity. It's actually now, well, for me, it's worse because now there's technology that I didn't have when I was growing up. And so uh, it's, it's amazing and a lot of I think a lot of people don't want to admit to the fact that you go through those things you know Mm -hmm. and uh I still even to even at this moment I'm like man this is getting awkward but (laughs) that you do I mean those things do happen I mean I honestly thought when I grew up, I grow up. Well, I thought I was gonna get married too. And but when I when my divorce went through, I said, you know, at least I'm an adult and I can be able to handle this better. No, it's still is that <laughs> when I was a kid. And uh, <laughs> the loneliness, yeah, the loneliness. Yeah. Um, um, I haven't had a girlfriend, so like I don't have that relationship there. But the loneliness there, because I don't have my girls, 
Um, I have them every other weekend. So it's like all by myself. Uh, Satan really tries to use those times when I'm by myself. And uh, he, he knows my triggers and what causes certain things to mm -hmm. really push those temptations into your brain. Mm -hmm. Satan's smart. He's thinking smart. He's so mm -hmm. smart. He's smart. Um, mm -hmm. He's he, and he's not like in your face. Ah, he's he's sneaky, sneaky smart. And you people gotta realize that like, he's not gonna just jump at you with a pitchfork, you know, and horns and all red. You know, he knows how to get around those things with uh, to you. But um, what was the original question? How to deal with this? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was thinking, I was like, it's over there. Let the, me help you. <laughs> what was the original question to this? I got so the question? question is, I don't know. I was, the question red. is, how do you keep yourself pure from sexual sin? There we are. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. So, um, and then, and having to do with temptation on that. So, uh, it's a daily battle. Um, and it's a, it's a thing that I have to uh, know that every day I've got to I've got to put my armor, you know, the armor of God, to be able to defend those those attacks and those things that happen. And we live in a society where I think you mentioned it earlier, like the uh, hookup culture that it's mm -hmm. it's okay. Even in the even in the church, I've come to realize yeah. and see it where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is even prevalent in here. This is terrible. <laughs> Where it's like, oh, you know, it's just that's the way it is. I'm like, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Right. Um, and it, and I see it all the time. Um, one of the things that I've tried to use, um, or no, let me rephrase that. One of the things that I have used is there's an app on my phone called uh, Countable to You, what? two with a two, a number, and um. It records everything you do on your phone wow. and it sends it to uh, your accountability partners. Wow. And, yeah. And so um, it's pretty in depth. Um, if you, I suggest to do something like that and you got to be. That is so good, Larry. Like it, men it, it, need to know about this. Single men yeah. need to know about this. That it's is so a, good. Say it again. Say it again. Accountable to you. And okay. it's the number two and not the T-O. It's the number two. Accountable to you. Accountable to you. Okay. Yeah. And wow. uh, it's cheap. It's like $7 a month. But um, you uh, pair it up with three or four of your accountability partners. Mm -hmm. And um, you've really got to trust these guys or whoever it is that you're going to do this with. Um, because they can see everything on your phone. Wow. Um, so if you're like putting like your passwords in for your bank account and your um, bank app, they could see those kind of things. And so um, you got to be, you got to really trust these people. <laughs> you got to trust, gonna be, gotta trust yeah. them. Um, so there's got to be really close people. But the reason I say that is because um, it records everything that you do on your phone. And there's like trigger words that if those come up, it sends them a text that says, hey, your accountability partner, Larry, was might be looking at something inappropriate. And so they immediately <laughs> will start texting you, hey. Larry needs to be slapped around. Someone needs to call it's Larry it and uh, It basically is what, what it does. And it, it and, and they'll, they'll text you like, hey, what, what's going on? What are you doing? You know, like, oh, what are you doing? Nothing, 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 I promise. Um, <laughs> nothing. But yeah. Um, well, one time I had a, a friend on Facebook tagged me about something about a basketball team that got beat by another basketball team and he posted it saying um, Brooks man our team got spanked and that triggered the word spank and send it to my accountability <laughs> partners yeah and the, my accountability partners were like laughing because they, they knew what the context was and they're like man this uh this app is really you know intrusive <laughs> like yeah it's yeah it, does. <laughs> it, it, it shows everything that you do there but um if you're on an app or, or if you're looking at something, even a video that might not be the best, it lets them know. Um, and it gives them a daily report. And on the daily report, it tells them um, how much time you spent on something that was questionable. And wow. so 
yeah, so it's really, it's, I mean, you're not going to get away with very much on that. And so that's that helped a lot. That information alone is golden right here. I think that was so <laughs> good because <laughs> that's so yeah. good for men that they need to know there's something out there because that, that, you know, that, that can help them be accountable. I didn't know there was such a thing. And, and I'm thinking like, girl, ladies that are married, girls, <laughs> you're, you're catching on here. <laughs> You can be your husband's accountability partner, honey. What you doing? What you doing? So yeah, this is a lot. This is very helpful. This is good. It keeps you like on, on track. And, and for you to be willing to do that, for you to be willing to say, hey guys, you know, I'm going to trust you with this. I, I need help in this. I, you know, that, that says a lot about you, Larry, as well. Well, I had to get onto that because without diving in too much into my situation uh, uh, my there was things in my life that caused a lot of problems in my marriage and there's once that got dissolved I realized I need help with stuff and that was one of the things that I had a, a really really close friend of mine plays guitar with me and on different worship bands and different things and he said hey i think you need to join me in this in this and and he showed it to me this is four or five years ago and i said yeah i need that and he ever since then i was like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna have that on there um and it really has helped because you just can't get around that thing <laughs> you're you're Good. you're constantly but the I, I joined that because I knew I needed something because of past experience in my life that has caused a lot of turmoil in my life. And mm -hmm. um, it took something major to happen for me to finally wake up. The problem is, is I don't know, most, most people, uh, let me talk to guys about this. Most guys, especially in the Christian setting, um, we don't want to admit to things that we're going through because we feel like we're going to get um, ostracized we're going to get um, uh, told that we're we're weak um, you know um, if you have a significant other then they're like you know you obviously don't love that other person because you're uh, dealing with certain things and it's um, so pe so guys tend to like uh, I don't want to share my information or, or 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 seek help or ask anybody for help, and especially when you're in a leadership role at a church, you know, or even just serving at a church, mm -hmm. because you're afraid that you're going to be told, well, you can't do this anymore, which mm -hmm. at the time will be a good situation for that to happen, but um, you feel like everything is going to be taken away. And so you just keep your mouth shut. You keep your mouth shut. And that grows, 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 makes it worse, worse, and worse, and worse. Because now you're you're hidden. Now you're alone. Now you're um, where the Satan can really come get you because you're all by yourself. And uh, there's nobody there to, to help you out with what you're going through. And then suddenly something explodes. And anyways, all that to say yeah. is that I, I, had to, I had to learn the hard way yeah. that I needed something like this because... Um, it wasn't out of just, hey, you know, I think I need this, you know, it was, uh, I need help. Yeah, I was at the lowest point and I said, I need something. And um, thankfully, my friend was able to be like, I've been through something awesome. like this. Let yeah. me give you this. And I was like, oh, thank you. You know, um, and it's awkward at first to have something like that because it's really you're really opening yourself up to the people that you're being accountable for. Mm -hmm. But then after a while, it kind of sets you free a little bit because mm -hmm. there's nothing to hide, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. that's freedom that mm -hmm. I finally have, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's, th that's what the enemy does. He, he, um, you know, he tempts you or he, he lures you into something and now you're trapped and now you've got this secret and you've got this habit or you've got this addiction that you don't want to share and it's ugly and it's just growing inside of you and it's a thought and it's, you know, whatever, whatever it is, but it's festering. And then eventually it becomes sin if you don't do something about it. But the word of God tells it, confess to one another, confess, confess to yeah. one another. And, <laughs> and then when, when you, when you can step into that freedom and when the truth comes to light and when you're able to say, Hey, this is what I'm struggling with. This is real. I need help. And then it's like, Oh, 
That's all I needed to say. And like, you know, there are, you know, there may be people that will judge you and there, but for the most part, the body of Christ, true believers, true followers of Jesus are going to come around you and be like, we want to be there for you. Let's, you know, or it might even confess to, to them struggling to the very same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I know that now, Mm -hmm. but when I was going through all that stuff, you don't you don't believe that you don't believe that people will be fine with it or not fine right. with it but they would be understanding like, right just, i feel like there's a, a, a like there's a there's not a, I don't know, a spirit i guess you can say of of a feeling that but it's, it's also satan who's confusing you but like mm-hmm. there's no way this they can't find out they can't find out because this is going to destroy who i am as a person to anybody and so I remember thinking, I can't, I can't, this, like, this can't happen. That, like, people cannot find out about this stuff. And once it got out, I was able to I mean, have a freedom because one of, first of all, I wasn't the only guy that was going through it. <laughs> there was so many guys that were like, oh, I've been there, let's talk, you know. And um, second, it was, um, I could get help. I finally could get help. And uh, you got to get out, you got to confess. You got to confess and it's not like uh you're going to like your priest and be like i confess my sins it's like i've got to get this out because it's, or else it's going to eat me inside and it's going to destroy me and it, i can see that in first hand that i experienced that it, it does destroy you from the inside out it's terrible wow yeah and it all starts with a thought mm-hmm. it all starts with the eyes and I can only imagine. I mean, for women, it's it's different, right? We, we are, you know, I'm I'm not dead, right? So we are we, right. we are um, when when a man is attractive, we we definitely yeah. we we can see that. But it's very women are more susceptible to the emotion, to the getting to know someone, to the personality, to all of these other attributes where a man is more drawn towards the eye. A man first, you know, falls in love or looks or or, or, or desires something with the eyes. It's always the eyes, right? For a man, I think it's, it's, um, it's maybe twice as hard, but yet nowadays, you have at your fingertips the ability to it's so easy (laughs) yeah to just sin to to just be filled with you know inundated with lustful pictures lustful images that just feed that monster and feed the 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 brain and and feed that lust uh monster right like you can do it in privacy of your own room nobody would ever know (laughs) and and um and so, yeah, I feel for these single guys, um, you know, that, that I see and I'm like, I wonder, you know, how they are dealing with that. Nobody's really, I don't, I don't hear a lot of conversations about it. I don't, you know, um, I don't hear a lot of sermons or a lot of, you know, a, a lot of classes on this or so, so this is, this is why I think I also want to, and it's, it's a very real problem too for for women too. It's not just men. I mean, women, you combine the loneliness, you combine the fact that you don't have a, you know, a marriage partner, you don't, you, you, um, you don't have the intimacy. And so there are things that can seem appealing, you know, and, and, it, and then more women are more susceptible to be tricked even, you know, so there's, just, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. And so how do we avoid that? I, I knew that I had to put some guards up right away. I think um, I think staying in His presence, staying in in prayer, stay all of that. When you're seeking the Lord and when you're operating in what He has for you, a lot of that thing, a lot of that becomes not as huge because your mind, you're constantly, but you're still having to battle the mind and these thoughts that that come. And so I had to put some some things. I I had to realize that a lot of things come through, right? The eyes is the first thing. And there are things that God began to show me. For example, I'm talking about women. I know this is entirely different for, for, for men. It's so much harder for men. But for me, it was like, do not, uh, do not look at men without their shirt on. Uh, shirt on, <laughs> shirt off. <laughs> With their shirt. Okay. Like I remember, do not like I remember. I have a shirt on. That could be a problem. 
<laughs> that their shirt on. So that means any, whether it was even a commercial, whether it was something on, on my feed, whether it was, you know, the minute to me, that was like, nope, I can't look at that. I can't watch that movie. And any, anything with um, a sexual connotation. And it became even more and more like it, at first it was like, I remember where I would watch movies and there was a sex scene in front of me and I'm like, well, this is natural. This is what happens. You know, this is fine. And then Holy Spirit was like, no, no, you will not watch that. You will not entertain your eyes with that. And then it just became, okay, now you can't even watch people kissing. No, you can't do that. Now you can't watch a man without his shirt, you know, uh, um, without having his shirt on. So that more and more, just keeping my eyes away from that, keeping um, my eyes so that, you know, it, it just right away, um, I remember the girls, um, you know, it, it became a joke around the house because, I, um, um, you know, for years I've had a crush on the rock. Okay. What well, woman doesn't. Okay. <laughs> but, but all of us said like, Holy Spirit really convicted me on that. I said, no, you do not like, that's not cute. That's not funny. You do not. So then the girls mentioned it, like, mom, um, you want to see this movie because the rock is in it. And I said, I don't care about the rock. I don't, you know, I, I, who cares? Like, I'm not interested in him. I don't, really? but it's just those things. Like, you know, the, the, it's, it's listening to Holy spirit as he leads you to holiness. Cause it's always going to be deeper. Cause you think you're like, I'm so great. Cause I don't watch porn really? <laughs> and then you're like, uh, you need to step away from that. And then he takes you, you know, okay, well, I, I just watch rated R movies. No. Okay. Now, now you don't now, you know, okay. So then, and, and he takes you further, but it's usually through steps. God is so merciful and graceful that he takes us through a process and he shows us, he begins to show us like, this is not for you. This is not good for you. Protect your eyes, keep yourself holy because Sin starts with a thought, with a thought. And so, uh, so keeping my eyes pure, um, it, it's, it's challenging to do, but, but it's very important. And so um, that's something that, that, um, that helps me that, that might help other women. I don't know how realistic that is for men because you've got so many distractions and you've got a whole different other radar. But yeah, I'd have to be like become a monk or something like that. I think to be able to. What? <laughs> what? So I would have to become a monk or something like that. Where I'm like, uh -huh. nothing. <laughs> okay. All right. So apparently. I was driving by construction workers. Oh my God. Lord, keep me focused. What the world, sweet mother. Oh gosh. Okay. TMI, I think. A little TMI going on right now. <laughs> Lord, keep me focused on you because it's so it's just so easy to be. I'm not dead, Larry. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm very much alive. And so I have to be focused, focused. And and then God begins to give you a love for people. And he's gonna begin. Yeah. Like I love for all and then you, you start seeing them as hey that's my brother in Christ like see him as God sees him like what he wants for him and and so it's it's a beautiful thing that God is just trying to 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 grow us and and, and walk us through this holiness process it's a, it's a process though it's not gonna happen overnight you know right. um, it's a process. I think the big thing is though what you said is like it's the Holy Spirit you got to have a relationship with him and um commune with him, conversate with him, um, be honest with him. Yeah. And uh, the Holy Spirit will help you in those things. But that's that's vital. That's very vital okay, to, to have the relations with the Holy Spirit. And um gosh, okay. So you can't drive by <laughs> construction workers. Okay. Duly noted. Oh my gosh. Am I gonna regret saying that? A little bit. A little bit. I'm gonna write that one down. A little bit. Little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna write it down for future but reference. It, they're not triggers anymore. They were triggers, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm good. Oh, well, 
uh, to that point, um, so I, I live with my sister uh, and her husband. Uh, they've been gracious to help me out with that. Um, and uh, I have my own room uh to help me in that situation i try i never close my door i never try to have my my door closed because i want that accountability uh and if my door is closed like it is right now because we're doing the zoom i'm waiting for my sister to knock on the door but hey what are you doing, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. uh, but i think she can hear me talk, i'm talking. with geo <laughs> yeah wait that's not gonna help um so it, <laughs> But my conversation, I think she'll understand that. It'll be like, oh, he's busy. Don't come back. But my door is usually not closed because I, I want that openness. Mm -hmm. And there was a time in my life where that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. You know, everything, it could be closed off and private. And I would do that as much as I can. My phone, okay, what I talked about, the accountability to you. Mm -hmm. um, which, by the way, you can put that on your phone, on your um, your tablet, or on your TV, because, you know, smart TVs, you know, you can, you know, watch Hulu and all that. It also can be on that, by the way. So it help you be accountable through that way as well. But um, I do try to my, I don't, I don't try, even PG-13 movies are bad, but I for sure don't go to a radar movie or watch a radar movie right. just because there's nothing good out of that. I mean, you're not going to get anything out of that. And what I want people to know is that I'm not saying that I'm unholy. I don't watch things. No, I, <laughs> there's struggles. Things happen. But I have, and I think the word I want to use is intentionality. Like I'm, in, I'm intentional, intentional on the things that I'm trying not to do. Do I fail? Yes, I'm human. But I'm intentional on trying to make yeah. decisions. Like, is this something I need to be doing right now? Is this yeah. something I need to be watching right now? And the Holy Spirit will convict you, you know, the Holy For Spirit sure. will talk to you. Like, hey, sure. well, let's just, just let's be careful with that, you know. Another thing I want to mention, because I want to make sure women, you know, women, you know that I'm calling you out on this because men are drawn so visual, right? But the women, we have, um, we have a great imagination. So there's, okay. there's fantasy. So we might not have it on our device. We probably say, hey, you know, we're pretty pure on our device. We're pretty pure when it comes to, you know, um, movies or what have you. Um, but yet the things that we think about, the things that we entertain in our mind and we mull over, like those are things that I'm constantly having to cast down um, at again, it has been a, a journey. Um, at first it was like, literally I had, I would shake my head. I would shake my head. Like I'm thinking a bad thought and I would shake it out. People would be like, what are you doing? And I, of course I didn't like, I couldn't tell them what I was thinking, but now it's just like, I recognize it. I'm like, no, no, I'm not going there. And, but at first it, man, it was heart and Satan would come with a thought or a fantasy or an idea or something, a visual in my head. And I would have to casting down imaginations and they're, you know, demonic stuff that come at you. They're attacks from the enemy and now less and less. And then now it's just like a thought sh shoots and I'm, nope, I'm not having it. And, um, a lot of it comes with fasting. Um, um, when you, when you begin to fast, um, you know, uh, in the physical, the food, um, it, it, it does something because you begin to train your, your body, your body's going to complain and cry like a two-year-old. And you say, no, no, I'm not, you're not getting food today. You're not getting, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on something else today. And, and when your body starts realizing that you're the boss, that it's your spirit that is the boss, it, things begin to, to shift. And I saw that shifting in my thinking as well. You become more disciplined. You become more disciplined in, in your thought area, in your um, emotions and a lot of things. And, um, you know, it's still, it's still work. It's still discipline. It's still a process. So, so having spiritual disciplines or building into your spiritual disciplines really helps is what you're trying to say. Yeah. Right. Like getting into those, uh, not just talking about them, but actually doing them. 
<laughs> not just reading them but actually getting into it and actually doing those things yeah because I can imagine people thinking oh fasting that means no eating <laughs> it's it's hard to start mm -hmm. but it's something you got to be intentional about doing those mm -hmm. things and, and the bible calls it the lord you know says to come away with me mm -hmm. you know and, and deny mm -hmm. yourself so you, you can yeah. uh, get closer to him it's mm -hmm. tough it's not yeah. easy because it, it, it's it's a um, it's not just about the food. At first, it it, it is all it is just about the food. First, yeah. But then you begin to realize, oh no, like God is showing me something through this. God wants to pull, yank, um, you know, have things fall off of me through this. He's teaching me that the flesh is, you know, the flesh is not in control here, and and so your your spirit, the you know, becomes stronger through it. So it. It, it is um it is a journey it is a process and i think um i hope that you hear us when we say that that you just don't think oh yeah well i'm gonna do this it's it's ask the lord seek the lord in this and and ask him to walk you through it and he's so gentle and holy spirit is so um comforting through that process he's like a best friend and he just leads you and it's not going to be harsh it's not going to be like condemnation it, it, it's going to be a soft conviction and, 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 and it's going to be moving you in the right direction. Yeah. And that, that's something I want people to know is that, you know, when we're spitting this stuff out, it's not like we know everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're just telling you what ha has helped with what we've mm -hmm. gone through. And I fail on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but thank you for, because of grace of, you know, Jesus Christ. I'm able to come to him every day and say, hey, I need help, Lord. I need you. I need you every day. Um, but you have that intentionality to, to go to him on a daily basis and uh, ask for help. Ask for help from, from the Holy Spirit. And he will help you. That's what he is. He's the helper. He is a helper. <laughs> and you can start brand new every day. You start brand new right. every day. Okay. Um, so really quickly, we're going to end right here with with how important is living out your calling and your purpose in all of this that we're talking about in, in holiness. Um, let, let's just talk that through. Let's, uh, so how important is, is being focused on your calling, the purpose, what God has give, gifted you with, what God is drawing you to your destiny? How important is that in the scheme of, of this? You know, we're talking about holiness. How does that help? Well, uh, you, God's called you to, God's called all of us to, to something. Mm -hmm. And if you allow those kinds of bad things come in, in your life and live in there, mm -hmm. you're never going to get there. Um, and so not as in works, but uh, as in being able to have the anointing and favor of God that, that comes with trying and, 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 and living a life that is pleasing to the Lord. And so, uh, you, you know, you can, God can, you know, you can be saved. God can love you or will love you and all that but his favor is not going to be there if you're living a life that's not what he's called you to be mm -hmm. uh, and when some of that has to be living a holy life um so his favor his anointing um is not there and so it is uh of utmost importance to 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 strive for that, not, not as works, but as into, I want to please the Lord. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, that favor will, will come with that, um, the anointing. Um, and um, that will help you get to that calling that God has for your life. And I'm 38 years old and I'm, I'm still trying to get there. And there's been so many stumbles in my life that have caused me not, I, I feel that has caused me not to be where I'm supposed to be. Uh, but thankfully, he has gotten my attention through the Holy Spirit and through the things that happened in my life that he's like, I need you here. So this is going to happen to you. But because I love you, I'm going to help you through that. 
you know, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. I, so, so I, I like the direction you took. I was, I was going somewhere else, but I'm, I, I get what you're saying. You're saying that, you know, if you're not do, you know, if you're not seeking the Lord, if you're not moving towards holiness, the sanctification journey, sanctification, huge word, all it means is that you're walking towards the Lord, you're becoming more like Jesus, you're becoming holy, set apart. And so as you're, str- as you're walking towards him, it, it, it's this, it, when you are hidden in Christ, again, when you are in his will, there's no safer place to be and you're walking it's, it's this beautiful walk as you're walking with the author of your life. When that's happening, then yeah, you have the favor and the anointing of all, you know, all, all, you know to, to, be, to be able to do everything that, that he's called you to do. Okay, now I, I, that is right. But I also want to mention the fact that if you are walking in your purpose and your destiny, if you are moving towards what he's called us to do and he's called all of us to make disciples, in the very least, that's what you've got to be doing. You got to make disciples. You got to be laying hands on people, casting out demons, healing people. You got to be about the Father's business. So if you're doing that, you're not idle. You're not sitting around, you know, uh, waiting for temptation to hit. You're not. You're not. Uh, your mind is occupied in how. How can I, you know, how can I build God's kingdom? What else can I do? How can I help other people? How can I share the gospel? And and so when you're focused on that, then you're moving towards your destiny and and you're moving towards holiness because that also draws you to the Lord. That also is part of, you know, what, what you were created to be. And so, so that there's protection in that when you, it's when you're not moving in purpose, when you're not walking in purpose, that the enemy can bombard you with stuff, with junk and distractions and a relationship could come that you weren't even supposed to, you know, get involved in. And, and, and all of these things can tug at you. And before you know it, the years go by and there you are in this, you know, in this, um, chaotic world when it's, Oh, I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to be holy. So, so it's all part of it. Yes. You need to spend time with the Lord. You need to be walking. You need to be in the word. You need to be doing these things, but you also need to be about the father's business. And it's a great lie of the enemy to say, oh, but you're not ready, but you, you know, you're just a single person. And by the way, I hate the word single because married or not, we all, all single individuals. That's why I like, I like the word unmatched (laughs) right now. We are currently unmatched, (laughs) Um, but to actually um, know that 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 um, that in this state, in this season in your life, when you are unmatched, for the enemy to come and say, "Well, you know, you need to find that person first, and then move in this." No, you need to be moving and operating in your purpose and your calling. All of a sudden, you're going to turn around, and that you know, as you're running, as you're building God's kingdom, that person is going to be right next to you. You want someone that's going to keep up with you, not drag you down or pull you down. Um, or, you know, keep you from the purpose and destiny that God's called you to. So that, I guess that's, that's what I, you know, both are good. (laughs) Both answers are really good, (laughs) I think. Um, but anything to add to that? No, I mean, I think you pretty much put it, uh, as clear as you can put it on there. Um, I, no, you got it. Okay. So, so man, there's a lot, there's a lot here. We didn't even cover, like there's a couple of questions that we didn't cover, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get to them. I feel like, you know, this is going to be a continuing conversation. I think we can do this again. Um, But I really appreciate you being really open and candid. I think that information about the app was super good. I think men need to get on that. I think women who are married need to get on that. Like you need to get as a couple. I think that would be a good account accountability to for a couple don't you think as well uh, yeah absolutely you just i mean that you just got to be ready to be open because there's all kinds of open there <laughs> yeah well in a marriage in a marriage in the yeah, you gotta be ready marriage. though um 
but yeah, so, so tackling a lot of things here. Um, let's just, uh, Larry, would you, you just pray for, for people that may be listening and, and they're struggling with all these things and maybe they don't have anyone to talk to. They don't have anyone to be open and honest with. And, and these things, they may be churchgoers, they may be even in ministry and they just, man, they feel trapped in maybe what you're, you know, what you were struggling with in the past. Um, I, you know, uh, whether it's, uh, pornography or whether it's relation, you know, relationships or, or, um, or just other addictions, other things that maybe they're hiding. They, they think it's secret, but let me tell you, everything comes out. Every, the truth always comes out. Oh, yeah. Comes to at some point in your life it's going to come out <laughs> yeah, yeah. so would you just pray over um, uh, all all those who are maybe within the sound of our voice and, and those struggling with maybe the, their walk in holiness okay let's pray lord heavenly father god we come before you um always lord humbly and thankfully uh, that we can come to you yes, in, in our best times but also in our in our worst times and right now i just i pray that that the holy spirit right now touches the hearts of anybody who's struggling with something right now when it comes to, to holiness god um whether it be somebody who's married maybe somebody who's single young person um i touch their heart right now uh, let them know that that you're there for them. Uh, let them know that uh, they can come to you in this this time of uncertainty or this time of just not knowing what to do or how to handle this, God. And may your Holy Spirit just come into their hearts and just uh, give them a, a, like an assurance or peace, an understanding of of hey, I'm here come to me and I just I I pray you give them hope because I remember being in that in the situation and feeling hopeless uh, that no matter what's going to happen it's not going to work out you know I'm not going to be able to get better I'm not going to be able to do better life is going to get destroyed for me yeah there's there's a sense of of hopelessness and I pray that you give them hope you are our hope Jesus you are the giver of hope God and um allow them to uh, open doors so they can um, go speak to somebody, um, have uh, relationships come into their lives that are godly, that are holy, that are yeah. um, anointed by you, that, that um, will allow them to have a, a candid conversation with those people. Um, because in the end, you know, you love them and you want them to be better, like to, to, to be better healthy and spiritually healthy. And you want that for them, for the lives to be healthy. And so um, I thank you for the opportunity to be here to, to speak on this, you know, uh, fumble and mumble and say maybe even the wrong things. Who knows? But Lord, I hopefully this touches somebody. And um, I'm glad that you're you're providing this, this avenue to help somebody right now. And so uh, we trust in you, Lord. We trust in the processes. And we are uh, just thankful that you have given us this ability to have this conversation yeah. in this very moment, at this very time. We, we love you. We, we praise your name always. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 This was fun. It's late now, <laughs> but I am thankful for you, Larry. I appreciate you. And good night. Let's get ready for our next talk. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, see you. Bye. Good night.